Welcome back, everyone. We had a nice lunch, saw some outstanding uh, highlight videos at lunch, and now it's time to begin the second half of our A10 Live component here at Media Day at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. Chris DeSano joined now by Fordham head coach Tom Pacora. Tom, how are you? Good, Chris. Always a pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for spending some time with us. Yeah, that's great. And uh, I think a good place to start is uh, we're here at Barclays. Obviously, we'll continue to be here for the conference tournament um, for a couple of years. But then the league is shifting the conference tournament temporarily mm -hmm. uh, to Pittsburgh and then Washington, D.C. Um, your thoughts on those developments? Well, I think it's great that when we do leave New York, obviously I'm a New Yorker and I love it being here at Barclays, but when we move, we are moving into major cities and major markets where we have a, an influence in the Atlantic 10 with Duquesne, obviously, in Pittsburgh, and then in the D.C. area with, with GW and with Mason. So big-time arenas is what a big-time conference deserves. So I, I'm excited about it. I think they're great fits. Shifting from league to your team now, and particularly today, John Sevier named to the preseason third team all-conference coming off a freshman season, which saw him average about 17.3 points a game. I can't say about if I'm going to mm -hmm. say 17.3, and uh, and make the all-rookie team. But right. for John, what does he need to do to continue in his development as a player? Well, it's just a maturation process, as it is for all young players. You know, you come through your freshman year, and and John, uh, as the year progressed, it became more and more difficult because he was the focal point, you know, defensively for our opponents. So you have a freshman who's trying to get up to 17 points a game to help us win, but he's being defended by a 22, 23-year-old senior. Right. So that's all part of the maturation process, and I think the lessons learned at the end of last season for him. He had a great offseason. He's been working hard, and, and I think that, you know, that spells uh, good things for the program because we have the young player who is uh, moving up and now is an all-conference player, and you need to do that each year. Mm -hmm. In each recruiting class, you need to have at least one player that's going to become, uh, have the potential to be an all-conference player. And that brings up an excellent segue. From a recruiting perspective, I, I know everybody has their own individualized approach. Um, mm -hmm. You know, what is yours to the extent that you can speak about it generally, obviously? Yeah, well, Fordham, we talk about the education. It's one of the premier schools in the country, if not the world. And the other thing we talked to them about is it's not a four-year decision, it's a 40-year decision. So if you're going to set yourself up for the rest of your life, you want to go to a university, if not Fordham, one very similar to it because of the alumni base and the success of our alumni and their involvement in our program. Mm -hmm. So it, it really is. We have to find young men that are going to see past bricks and mortar. They're going to understand what this university education can do for them. And that's hard. You have to really find a, a very mature 17, 18-year-old. All the parents are gone board, you know, when they see our national ranking academically and our graduation rate, which is 100% since we've been there. All of those things are positives for the parents, and then we have to sell a young man on, and here's why, mm -hmm. and, and those are the things we sell. To that end, you've made some great strides on the recruiting trail over the past few years for sure, mm -hmm. and you bring in another strong class. Can you briefly touch upon each one of the guys that you're bringing in and their skill sets for those who aren't familiar? Yeah, well, this year uh, in, in this recruiting class, Eric Pascal is a 6'6" wing forward who was a uh, New England uh, prep school player of the year last year, originally from Dobbs Ferry, and we expect big things out of him. Uh, Christian Zengfeller is uh, from Munich, outside of Munich, Germany. Mm -hmm. Another freshman at about 6'8", 240, who's a stretch four, but still physical enough to, to bang. Zaire Thompson, another teammate of his at our Earth Spring Academy in Germany, who can come in and be a solid point guard and, uh, and run the club. So we're, we're really excited about that. We had two redshirt freshmen. You know, we had Manny Suarez, Mm -hmm. uh, who was out last year with a shoulder injury. He was a 6'9", stretch four guy. Antoine Anderson from Bishop Kearney was a red shirt last year. Explosive backcourt player who can play one or two. And then Dekiba, uh, who he comes from Australia, and uh, he, he's a backup uh, center 4-5 for us. So I think it's the first year where we have uh, two players at each position and we have great depth. And Nemanja as well. As well. Nemanja, I'm yep. sorry. Yep. You know, Nemanja is like, a, a, a 20-year-old and a 40-year-old body <laughs> uh, mindset. I, I apologize. He's, you know, he comes in and asks me questions, and I have to look at my notes. He's such a bright young guy, Nemanja Zarkovic, who has been tremendous with the basketball in his hands. And even when we moved him off the ball, we took a tour of Canada this summer. And we were able to play four games up in the Montreal area, uh, and he was exceptional up there. So uh, we're really excited about everyone. I was just going to ask about Canada, and obviously the cultural experience is huge in and of itself. Mm -hmm. But then for your players on the court, were there any pleasant surprises in Canada? I'm oh, sure very much so. Yeah. yeah, well, that's why you do it, especially with a young team, because they can all travel. But uh, the off-the-court experiences are incredible. It's a wonderful city. I would, I would encourage any basketball team and, and so many of my friends since we came back to go and experience it. It's so, so much like being in Europe. Mm 
The basketball, the level of play was much better than uh, it was years ago when I, when I had been through before. So the ball keeps getting better and better. But, yeah, seeing some of the young players develop, and it really gives you the 10 practices leading up to it sure. are yeah. as important, if not more, than the actual trip. So, uh, yeah, we got to see some good things out of uh, the growth of our veterans mm -hmm. and, and being able to look at different combinations and getting different people on the floor. So it was very positive. Leads me to a question that we received uh, from Twitter um, mm -hmm. from Mike, who basically asked whether or not you're going to go with more of a four guard uh, or play more traditional mm -hmm. in light of this new personnel that you have. Obviously, you've got an influx of new players. We so. do, and uh, no, we won't have to. We won't be playing as much small ball because okay. uh, we won't need to. You mm -hmm. know, last year Brian Smith, who's now a senior, one of our two seniors. You know, he's in practice and he's all smiles because at 6'3", he was banging against four men playing last four. year. Yeah. And we're trying to drag him away, and now he's playing a more natural two and three spot mm -hmm. uh, on the floor. But we have greater depth on the baseline. Our uh, four men, so to speak, if you give numbers, are stretch fours. Right. And the way we run our four-out motion, that's very important because it creates great spacing. It allows for seamless offense. So we're excited about those guys being able to play at that spot. Christian, Manny, and then even Eric Pascal once in a while. And you just talked about Smith now back to that norm, you know, normal or natural role definition. He's a guy that can really put the ball in the bucket. What are you looking to see from him in terms of his individual development? Well, just that. Yeah. You know, he was a tremendous high school scorer here in New York. Midwood High School had 67 in one of his games while we were watching him. His dad's an alum, class of 81 at Fordham. Wonderful young guy, ahead of track to graduate. He'll, he'll probably graduate early. Uh, we need the, the leadership with him and Ryan Canty being our only two seniors. Right. We really need them not only on the floor but in the locker room and on the road and that senior leadership. And, and it's important. Now, these are guys who have been through our system for four years. Mm -hmm. And I always expect a lot of, our, of my seniors. There's great demands on them. So uh, they're going to be busy men this year. Speaking of Canty and Rooms, I mean, we'd be remiss if we had mentioned the big fellas. Mm -hmm. uh, Canty had that 19 rebound performance in the A-10 tournament. Yeah. Um, you know, as a, as a unit, what are you expecting or looking for from those guys? Well, right now, Ryan Canty's on the shelf. He had back surgery okay. about three weeks ago. Okay. We're hoping to get him back mid-December. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're going to see as things progress. But, you know, he really showed – he's been up and down with his back injury throughout his career. When he was healthy – there aren't a whole lot of players who got 19 rebounds in a game, and that's against a good George Mason team. So mm -hmm. you see what he's capable of. Ryan Rooms has just been steady, and his game continues to grow. His role within this team continues to grow. His offensive game has gotten better. Uh, he continues to work hard in the weight room and do all the things we need him to do. Coach, just taking a, a look at the league, you know, internally as you look out, uh, what are people saying to you about this league, about its profile, the competition that exists in it? They're just like, you know, people, do people realize how good the A-10 is? And I said, well, hell, after six teams getting to the tournament last year and then the runs the teams have gone on over the last few years, uh, basketball people do. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, as we came to Fordham to try to rebuild this, you know, three bids year one, four bids, five bids, six bids. So the league continues to get better and better. Uh, with teams leaving it, everyone was concerned, oh, will the A-10 dip? And it, and it, only, and it has only become better. Uh, I think the addition of Davidson is going to make it a, a, an even stronger league. So uh, I would never underestimate the A-10. It's, it's a power conference in men's basketball. Coach, thanks very much. Uh, best of luck this season.